Hi, this is Scott Simpkin from Palo Alto Networks. I'm going to give you an introduction to the new Autofocus Threat Intelligence Service, as well as take you through the key functionality of the product in a demo. Let's get started. First of all, you should understand the context around why we developed Autofocus. There are three fundamental challenges that we are trying to solve um, with this new service. First and foremost, I think many of you will agree that there are simply too many security alerts that to deal with any day. So what you need to be able to do is determine which events are the most important and prioritize those over all everything else. This is an example of, let's say you have a state-sponsored adversary group coming after your company versus a low-level cyber attacker. Um, you would apply more resources to that adversary group. Number two, how do we add context to security incidents? Um, take the example of where you get a list of malicious domains, hash values, or IPs saying something is bad. Generally, this can come from information sharing organizations, uh, maybe the FBI or your local equivalent, but they essentially tell you the same thing. Here are malicious indicators, do something about it. Whereas, a better solution would be adding context around those, such as who is the adversary? Is this attack part of a long-standing campaign? What are the related indicators you need to think about when looking at this attack? And even context around the industry itself, so who is being targeted? In this case, what you see on the slide, um, from this is from our Unit 42 Threat Intelligence team here at Palo Alto Networks, where they discovered a Lotus Blossom, which is a state-sponsored adversary group going after government and military organizations. And they were able to determine all of this data directly from autofocus and build a complete picture of the campaign and the adversary. Number three, requirement is you need to be able to take a quick and proactive response. So all of the research and all of the analysis in the world will not do you any good if you cannot make it actionable and put it into practice. So the third thing we are trying to achieve with autofocus is how do you get indicators of maliciousness and tur turn them into new prevention mechanisms on your Palo Alto network security devices or third-party security devices. So those are the three challenges we sought out to solve. How do you determine what is critical, a unique, and a targeted attack? How do you add context to those indicators? And then how do you make it actionable and take preventative, proactive actions uh, to keep your organization safe? To put this into context of uh, what we do here at Palo Alto Networks is we have a, our next generation security platform. As part of that platform, we have the Threat Intelligence Cloud. Um, within that cloud, we have a tremendous amount of intelligence on the order of hundreds of millions of malicious samples, hundreds of millions of sessions, and billions of threat artifacts. So what we sought out to do was create a new innovative threat intelligence service that can uh, answer those three key challenges we just talked about, um, and we brought to market autofocus which pulls from the visibility into our threat intelligence cloud, makes it actionable so you can do analysis, correlation, and do prevention on all of that rich security data we have at Palo Alto Networks. And this is really for the security analyst and the security operations manager. So with that, um, let's take you into the product itself so you can get a feel for autofocus and the key capabilities it offers. So this is the autofocus console. Um, of note, this is a completely hosted security service. So you do not need um, to have any additional performance impact to your Palo Alto Networks devices. Um, you do not need to buy a new device. It is all in the cloud available to you. So starting out, first and foremost, um, we're going to talk about the dashboard right now. So what you're seeing here is a very responsive and intuitive view into the unknown threats seen by your organization. For instance, I'm going to build this out to 90 days now, and you can see right here from a top-level perspective all of the unknown malware events um, hitting your organization. Good uses for this part of the product are when you see the peaks and valleys. You can understand if you are the target of a campaign 
uh, when attacks are higher than average. Maybe on uh, these low points, uh, attackers are taking the day off, so to speak. So that is number one, how you can prioritize and focus your limited security team's efforts by just understanding uh, when attacks are more prevalent. Getting into it a little bit more is you can see right here the applications that are delivering unknown threats. This is a golden opportunity to have an attack surface conversation. Understand which of these applications are being used to deliver unknown threats. And looking here in this example, we can see things like FTP, uh, right here, POP3, which may use SSL encryption, uh, Yunpan, which is a Chinese social media site, uh, or Flash, which as we um, have seen in recent uh, months and years, has a lot of vulnerability uh, against it and could be a, a ripe attack surface for uh, adversaries out there. So you can use this information to understand where you are vulnerable and augment your policy to enable the applications that should be on your network and disallow those that pose high risk and should not be. Stepping into the next section where we see top malware. This is a great way to understand which specific threats are hitting your company. So for instance, this is delineated by hash value. You can see this piece of malware is very active. Uh, that would indicate to me that it is a commodity attack and you may not need to pay too much attention to it since it will most likely be solved uh, from your typical and, and more uh, traditional uh, anti-malware solutions. But when you see these lower volume attacks that um, are potentially of great interest and great risk because they may be very unique and they may be very targeted, uh, it becomes much more valuable as a security tool uh, to, fo again, focus your efforts and get to what's important right away. Third piece on the dashboard is uh, what we call our top firewall section. Uh, we know many of our customers have firewalls, uh, next generation firewalls in many locations. So this allows you to determine which area of your network is being hit by the most unknown malware events. For instance, I would generally uh, see the top uh, performers being your perimeter firewalls since they are exposed to the most threats. Maybe you have your data center firewalls down the line, um, and then maybe internal segmentation gateways or smaller branch offices. But this will allow you to determine which firewalls are experiencing the most traffic uh, to protect your users. So the last piece of the uh, dashboard view is this list of source and destination. So this is always a valuable tool to determine if there's a specific region uh, being targeted or sending attacks against you. Uh, a really great way to get that geographic perspective and potentially take policy action uh, to block or uh, limit usage um, to certain areas. So before I get into the next section of autofocus, um, very important is we also provide you the context around your industry. So if you were just looking at the data that you saw internally, um, you may, may uh, miss potential security events against your peers. So when you click over the industry tab, you now see all of the same information except for every piece of visibility Palo Alto Networks has across your industry peer group. So in this case, we can see high tech, the applications that are being used to deliver threats, the top malware that is being used, as well as source and destination. You can also, of course, click into the all view, where you can see a complete view um, into all the data Palo Alto Networks has across our entire global customer set with those billions of artifacts and hundreds of millions of sessions I was talking about earlier. So going back to my data in my organization, a key piece of autofocus is we'll move um, now from the dashboard and visibility into how autofocus actually prioritizes the most um, unique and targeted attacks for your organization and adds context around those events um, in a very simple manner. So first, let's cover tags. So as you can see here, there is a set of tags um, that have been observed by my data in my organization. What you can see here is um, these are built by our Unit 42 Threat Intelligence team. And I'll give you an example of one being CryptoWall. Uh, that is a uh, 
you know, commonly known as ransomware with uh, basically at the end of the day, it encrypts your computer, attempts to extract a ransom for you to de-encrypt the files. But what we've done is our threat research team has built um, a little bit of data around it so you can know exactly what it is if you didn't already know. They have references for third parties so you can find out more information easily about this threat. And most importantly, um, how it works. So every tag has a set of um, IOCs or artifacts that it matches against. In this case, you can see uh, file activity um, as well as uh, more file activity uh, containing different parameters so that whenever um, any one of these uh, indicator of compromise hits your network, you will be alerted. So the tag will fire. You'll see it in the autofocus dashboard emailed to you or sent via HTTP post um, to say crypto wall is on your network. You can also directly jump from a tag to, um, in order to do a search. So we'll get to that in one minute, but you can click within autofocus, anything is actionable uh, to get further into the details. So getting into um, alerting is, like I mentioned, you will immediately see what threats are on your network, what tags have been triggered. So you can see here Andromeda, uh, as well as uh, Helsing and CryptoWall uh, here. But it really allows you to get that context and priority of what's happening. To give you a sense of the tags that, that we offer is there is a tremendous amount of, of intelligence that our Unit 42 team has built into the product. We don't have time to go over uh, you know, nearly any of them, but just know that we are thinking about adversary groups, we are thinking about campaigns, we are thinking about specific threats such as crypto wall, and um, we're doing that in a very wide manner. So a great example here is uh, Deep Panda, also known as Shell Crew, where you can immediately determine if this was on your network. You can see that um, it's a state-sponsored adversary group and you can see related tags associated with that, so the Trojan backdoors that are used by um, this adversary group. And to get a sense of how powerful these tags are, we are not just matching on things like MD5, you know, hash or URL. We're looking at any artifact from a file or um, host-based or network-based perspective. So you can see, for instance, digital signer is here, HTTP activity, DNS activity, but it's an incredibly powerful way to determine uh, what is happening on your network and gain the context uh, to focus your, your efforts on um, taking the proper mitigation and preventative action. So next, um, I wanna show you the search capabilities. So now we've covered the dashboard, we've covered tags and adding context and priority uh, to your data. The final piece of autofocus is really the analytics and correlation that we've built into the tool. So it is a multi-level, very granular search engine. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can look at anything from a host-based um, or a network-based perspective. These are all of the attributes you can search on. So I'm gonna take a specific example. So for instance, if I um, am alerted that a domain is malicious, uh, let's say this, uh, this is actually a real example, uh, occurred during a big healthcare data breach here in the US. So I immediately want to know, uh, am I affected by this? So I'm gonna ask Autofocus the very simple question of have I seen this domain uh, on my network? So we'll let Autofocus search through the billions of artifacts and as it happens, uh, in my network, it is not present. So that's a very good thing, but now, you also have the ability to correlate this data with public samples, which are gained um, when organizations choose to share their samples publicly, which is an opt-in feature, or uh, all samples, which is a complete data set anonymized from autofocus. So I'm gonna click over to public samples and learn what uh, autofocus and Powell to networks know uh, about this important uh, domain. So as you can see here, uh, we have 12 samples that call the WellPoint domain. Immediately from search, you see the threat, you see when it was observed, and you see the tag. So I now know 
This domain is associated with uh, Deep Panda, a known adversary group, and that can allow me to say this is a very important threat. There's a tremendous amount of detail such as sessions, where there's information about network sessions, who it was delivered to, um, as well as a wealth of other pieces you can look at. Statistics, which show you uh, data about the threat from a volume-based perspective. And um, information on the domain URL and IP address. Uh, so it's a very rich analytics tool. So another example would be, let's say, we'll also, uh, we want to provide a more granular search. So for instance, I can now say, I'll look at my wildfire verdict uh, in order to determine if this is malicious or not. Uh, it's a very, you know, very easy way to say if wildfire knows that something is bad, uh, let's focus on that and get rid of the generic benign uh, instances. So now we've brought it down uh, just a little bit. You can also take searches that, for instance, go on your industry, uh, about specific regions, and a lot of other detail. Uh, quick anecdote is when Unit 42 uses the autofocus tool to do their research, they will actually start from an indicator just like we are and get into a lot of detail to build that campaign or that adversary group uh, that is necessary to expose them and protect everyone. So let's dive into one of these sections. So I'm going to pick out this uh, specific piece of malware. I'm going to let autofocus load, which will uh, let us have a deep visibility into the artifact level and indicator level from what's happening. So again, you can choose to make this public or private if this was your data. You can see network sessions to if it was yours in order to determine who is delivered to. There's a lot of uh, information right here, such as all the different hash values, including fuzzy hashing, uh, to provide a lot of value. Like I said, you can pivot off of any artifact here, so you can quickly add these um, attributes to your search and do it. But what I think is far more interesting is what we've done from a uh, prioritizing at an indicator level your analysis efforts. So what you're looking at here is the result of wildfire dynamic analysis um, for this sample. What you see here are that prioritization using a statistical analysis, an engine we built in-house that tells you which of these are highly suspect, which of these are suspect, and which of them are uninteresting. So let's take DNS activity, for instance. If you remember, we were looking for the WellPoint domain. And what you can see here is it's a breakdown between benign instances, malicious, and grayware. And you'll see that there are zero benign, zero grayware, and 12 malicious, which means this was seen a very small volume of time, but all of it was bad. So we know it is a high value indicator for our research efforts. You can also pivot directly into uh, data from PanDB, our URL categorization database, where you can see what category um, this uh, URL has been in, in this case malicious, and you get the advantage of our massive passive DNS history showing domain resolution, um, which can all be valuable indicators uh, to either block or take action on or do further analysis uh, with. So that's just one example there. Um, I'm going to go into file activity now to show you uh, the scale of what this statistical analysis is looking at. So if you look down here, this indicator is 73 million malicious, uh, benign, 17 million uh, malicious, and 2 million grayware. That would be wasting your time, uh, which I know you do not have a lot of, versus go up to the top, and you can see 297 all bad, or 292 all bad. Um, so what is a great way to take the next step is you find one of these indicators that may be a very um, high value, add it to search. So I'm going to remove the WellPoint filter. And by the way, you can save your search. You can uh, open your saved searches or export and import them So to share them with either folks in your company or peers or uh, reference them uh, in the past. So now I'm going to search for File Activity Media Center, uh, look for only things categorized by malware, and I'm also now looking in my data. So if you remember uh, that the um, original WellPoint filter 
was not present in my organization uh, because it was not seen. But now we've pivoted to a different indicator of compromise. And we've, we're, we now see that this is associated with uh, ransom crypt, which has been observed in my organization. Uh, so you can immediately determine that's important. As well as um, Deep Panda is on my network. So now I can say, so this state-sponsored adversary is attacking me, um, and I need to do something about it. So right here, a great way to, to take the next step and the final piece of autofocus is how do you take an actionable response? So that is where you actually say, click here, and we're allowing you to export indicators of compromise directly from autofocus into Palo Alto Network security devices or third-party devices. So I'm going to add suspect items to export list. I'm going to call it you know, uh, a, you know, APT1, create new, and I've now added this DNS activity to a block list, which can be consumed directly by uh, uh, Palo Alto Network's uh, pan OS um, dynamic block lists for more automated prevention or into any of your security devices to stop um, to stop this threat. What is important also is you can actually create new tags. So if you found a threat that uh, is very important to you or a set of indicators that is very important to you, you can create your own tag uh, that will be visible to folks in your organization or you can also choose to publicly share these tags. So for instance, um, this is a, a view of some of the tags that have been created by other members of Autofocus and chosen, be chosen to share publicly with other members. So what we hope is that as more people use the service, the network effect of information will compound on itself and you'll be able to um, find things that you would have never been able to find before uh, using Autofocus. So just to wrap up, Autofocus is a tremendously powerful threat intelligence tool. Between the dashboard visibility from your, you or your organization or your peers or everyone, the tagging to add the context and priority to the important events, and the searching capability, which allows you to do very in-depth threat research uh, and find new attacks that you could have never found before, uh, creating new tags and sharing those with everyone, and finally, how once you've done your research, you can create export lists of these valuable indicators directly into Palatine Networks or other devices to do true prevention and at the end of the day, stop these unique and targeted um, attacks before they can impact your organization. Thank you very much. Um, we're happy to uh, let you know more information and do a more in-depth one-on-one demo. So please contact your Palatine Networks representative or partner um, and visit our website for more information. Thank you very much.